Today we're talking about finding the area of a circle. And I know that most of you understand and are, have previous experience with what the formula is. But today we want to talk about it like in the other ones, making it relevant to a shape that we already know. The problem is that we have a curve here and we have no shape that has a curve. So, what we're going to do is take the circle and cut it up into pieces. And I'm going to cut it up into eight equal size pieces and then arrange those pieces such that one going up, one going down, one going up, kind of like teeth. And this starts to look like a shape that we, that we know a formula for. Uh, and maybe you can, you can guess already. But once again, I still have a little bit coming off of there. You know, it's like curve, curve, curve. So in order to make less curvature, we cut it up into more pieces. Instead of eight, we cut each piece into half again, and we get 16. 16, still a little curve. If we cut it up a little more, we get 32, and then 64. Well, how about we cut it up into, oh, I don't know, 1,024, 10,000, you know, things like that. No matter what, we could always arrange them, theoretically, one up, one down, one up, one down, and a shape would arise. And what shape would that be? Well, it might look something like uh, a parallelogram or a rectangle, maybe, if you, got, if you get it just right, things like that. So, and then it just becomes a matter of, well, we need to know what the height is. I should write it here, I, what, what the height is, uh, and what the length is, because we know that for a parallelogram, the formula for a parallelogram is base times height. Well, this one's pretty easy, because if we, if we look up here, this one is the radius of our circle. So that is indeed our radius. Now, our length might be a little bit more challenging. This, our, our length is, well, it's, it's not all the way around the circle. It's actually halfway around the circle, because we have half of the, the pieces looking, going up and half of the pieces going down. So, uh, circumference is 2 pi r. Half of the circumference would equal just 2 pi r. So if that's half of the circumference, this is pi r. The area of this shape would equal to base of pi r, height of r, which would give me pi r squared. And so that's one way of explaining how to get the area of a circle. The area of a circle equals pi r squared. Now that we know the area of a circle, we need to talk about parts of the area. And there are a couple parts of a circle and the, which have vocabulary terms. First off, there is a sector of a circle. And a sector of a circle is, as my picture shows, the region between two radii and an arc of the same circle. So that little pizza pie piece uh, that, you can, <laughs> that you can see right there. That is a sector. And of course, to find the area of a sector, you would need to know how big of a piece of pizza you are getting. So just like arc length, I am going to use a theta right there to figure out how big it is. And if I was going to do the whole circle, it'd be 360 degrees out of 360 degrees. But I don't want to do that. I want to use two part. I'm not going to take the whole pizza. It's theta over 360 degrees times or multiplied times the, the area of a circle, which now we know is pi r squared. Fantastic. Area of a sector. Theta is the where, well, should we, we should put that in there, where theta is the arc measure. And you know that's the same thing as the central angle. How about that? Okay. The other S word for parts of a circle is a segment of a circle. And that's the region between a chord and the included arc of a circle. So now it's not the whole piece of pizza, 
but just the stuffed crust that you like. You're going to cut it off like that. And, and as you might could tell, that now it's kind of like, well, we're going to take a sector. We're going to subtract a triangle. And then what's left over is the segment. Sector, well, that we, we know what that is. That's theta over 360 pi r squared minus a triangle. A triangle is, of course, base times height divided by 2. And that's going to be the area of the segment. That's about as good as I can get for a formula. The triangles will come in different shapes, and you'll see that I will have to give you a side, the base and the height. But later on, when we get to trig, we will find a different ways of finding the area of the triangle, things like that. But for now, that's good. The other thing, uh, the word that goes along with area of circles is a different shape. It's not really, let's see, I don't know, it's a part of a circle. It's like, but this one is called an annulus. And the annulus is the region between two concentric circles. So it's like you did a circular cut on it. Uh, and so you're going to take just all the crust, right? And of course, this one would be uh, an area, this is pi r squared, which would be the larger radius minus pi r squared, which is the smaller. So how am I going to figure that out? So that's good. So I'll put an L here maybe, or a large radius minus the small radius. And equal, this is the area of the annulus, annulus. You folks in Latin might have seen the word annulus prior to the, today. Okay. Now I'd like to do an example of a problem that you might see tomorrow. What it says is to find the area of the, of the shaded region. And what I've given you is a coordinate. There's the x axis and the y axis and some points on the circle. Uh, so right here, this is 10, 0, this is 8, 6, and negative 8, 6. Well, right away, you can tell from here to here, the radius is 10. So the point right below this would be 0, negative 10. And the problem, I guess, just to summarize it, if we knew the area of the circle, taking away the area of the triangle, we would have the shaded region. Easy enough, right? All right, so circle, so circle, I like doing a picture. Circle minus tri triangle equals shaded region. Well, circle, we need pi r squared. Triangle, we need base times height divided by 2. So for pi r squared, we need to know what the radius is. If we look at, so the radius, if that's 10, 0, well, yes, the radius must be 10. So that's pi 10 squared. Base times height divided by 2. So which one well, we need a base? All right, a base. So if I can use the distance from here to here, distance formula. Don't need the distance formula right now. Don't do it. Okay, uh, but I can notice right here that this is negative 8, 6 and positive 8, 6, meaning that this is indeed a horizontal line. If that's a horizontal line, then all I need to do is to figure out how far it is from negative 8 to positive 8. And of course, you could say, well, that's 16. So the base is 16. Now I need to know what the height is. Well, the height would be a perpendicular through a vertex. And magically, I've given you one perpendicular because the y would be perpendicular to the horizontal line. And if all now I need to figure out how far it is from here to here. If that's negative 8, 6, and that's positive 8, 6, well, this must be 0, 6. And from 0, 6 to 0, negative 10 is also 16. So now we just need to calculate this. Pi r squared, that's 100 pi. 16 times 16, and then divided by 2, that's going to be the same thing as 8 times 16, or 128. And if you'll notice right now, I can't do any more manipulation unless I put in a value for pi. Right, so this indeed is the exact area of the shaded region. So don't try to put them together unless you're getting a rounded answer. So if I, if I want a rounded answer, that's when I put in 
an approximation for pi. And you can go ahead and look at that. And that, if I multiply that out, that would probably come out to be 186 in about 16 hundredths. Okay, square units, because I didn't put a number on there, centimeters or anything like that, and then put square units. All right, hope that was clear enough. Here are the problems for tonight, and come ready for tomorrow. Hope that you have uh, no problem with these. You'll notice that the first one has a radius of 8, and that is a right triangle. That helps. Number two, uh, there's arc AB has a measure of 60 degrees worth a radius of 12 meters, and I wanted that shade of the region. Number three has a diameter, D equals 15 inches, with EF at 120 degrees. And then number four, this picture here, with the inner radius of five, and the distance between the two radii is two inches. Good luck. See you tomorrow.